Treasure Hunters, welcome to the show. i got some thoughts in my head today that I need to get out, and um, they're on the hints and the clues. You know, Forrest had told us that the thrill of the chase has hints sprinkled throughout it, if you can spot them. So let's get to it and see if we can spot a couple of them. So here we go. Let's start off with this right off the top. Here's the preface to the thrill of the chase. And right off the top, in the very first paragraph, Forrest tells us that his natural instinct is to embellish just a little bit. And right here in this chapter on important literature, you can see where Forrest is saying that nonfiction writers only have to be right 85% of the time. That's leaving 15% of embellishment, of maybe a little exaggeration to get a story to do the turn or the twist that you're trying to put onto it. So we know that kind of right from the start, Forrest tells us that he stretches the truth a little bit, you know? Um, he goes on to tell us about things that he collected, arrowheads, bottle caps, string, things like that. Can't help to wonder, is there a clue hitting in these? What is the purpose of the stories? Um, they're really good stories, but you just can't help to wonder, am I missing something in these stories? So anyway, I started thinking about this big freaking ball of string that Forrest says that he collected when he was a kid. He says he come home from school one day and it had disappeared. Um, you know, he says that the ball was so big it wouldn't fit through the bedroom door. So, you know, that to me sounds like a little embellishment. You know, I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but it does sound like there's some embellishment there. And like I said, at the beginning of the thrill of the chase, Forrest says his natural instinct is to embellish a little. Um, I started thinking about that ball of string and I was wondering, could there be a clue in this in this chapter? Something here that we need to find? Or is this directing us towards something? Anyway, here's what I found. So I did a reverse search. Instead of looking for yarn or any or string or anything like that, I did it reversed. I started looking for clues. You know? Look at this definition for clue. A ball of thread or a yarn. Do you not think that that is, you know, coincidental? I think there's something to this story. I think, you know, everybody should go back and really reread this story. Anything with the strings, especially with the teachers with ropes. Now, I say teachers with ropes because this has my red letter day in it. This is where the red letters appear in the thrill of the chase. I think it, I find it peculiar that the rope, yarn, or string, whatever you want to call it, and the red letters are appearing together. Um, I think there's something in this chapter as well, and I think it's all pointing to the final resting place of, of indulgence. Take a look at this image right here of teachers with ropes. This, this, this comes off of fintreasure.com. This is D. Carl Thomas. You know, I love the thought that went into this image right here. It, it, it makes it seem like step by step by step. I mean, could that be possible? Is that what's happening? You know, it keeps the thoughts going in your head, and I love the imagination that went into this right here. Well, everybody, I want to thank you for watching today. That's my thoughts for today. You know, and like, they're just my thoughts. Don't take anything seriously. You know, you, you got to do your own research. You got to think for yourself. Nothing is set in stone. These are just simply my thoughts that I want to share with you that might help you get get your thoughts rolling too and start figuring out this treasure hunt this year i want to thank you guys for watching i'm rick mcdonald you know me as the illinois ghost please don't forget to like and subscribe um i'll see i'll catch you in the next video guys you guys are great thanks